I'm going to show you how the backup plugin duplicator works. Right now we're looking at a, a site here on my own computer. I made this in desktop server and it's basically for the moment just a test site. I logged in, so we're going to go into the back end. I already installed and activated duplicator. We're going to go to packages screen and this here will list the various backups you've done for your site. And right now I've created none, so I'll create new. Here the name shows today's date and also the title of the site. Under storage it will basically show you where it's being stored. And these are the various options that you can uh, save to through the Dupl uh, Duplicator Pro. In the archive, I can uh, archive only as a database if I want to. I can enable file filters, which means I will exclude directories here and file extensions, for instance, media or archive, if I don't want to include this and then the backup. Under installer, this is a, a section that you can pre-fill if you know the host database and user to where you want this added to. So I usually skip that and I do this later on. Click next and it scans the site. In the setup we see information about the site here, PHP version, etc. In WordPress we'll see the WordPress version core files, cache path. If this path is over a few megabytes, it will give a warning and it will give you a chance then to refresh the cache and rescan the site. And as you see right here, it's not a multi-site. Under size checks, we see how large it is, file count, directory count. And right here, we see a really huge file. It's a four megabyte JPEG. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to exclude that from my backup. Or I would go back and, for instance, make this smaller and it would not show up here. So we're going to add a filter and rescan it. So it's been removed from the backup. Add on sites will basically show if there are other directories that contain other sites and that will, might be included in the backup. This can also be excluded. Name checks, it will show that if you have some foreign characters in the file names, they will be included here. So you can also exclude those if you want to, and then click Add Filters and Rescan. Database will basically just give you an overview of the database. And if there are certain fields that seem really large, it might be a good idea to just clean up the database before creating a backup. So we're going to click Build. This then zips up the whole site. And at the same time, it also creates an installer.php file that we use to install the site online where I plan to put it. So I click Installer and the Archive and I'm going to log into the cPanel at the host where I plan to put this. I've logged into Arch Hosting, a new host I'm testing out. And I'll also log in then to cPanel. I'm going to put it into the domain paulyokinumnal.com. So I'm going to go to File Manager and I'm going to upload the installer and zip archive and this can be done then through the file manager in cPanel but and also in FTP program so and click upload and I'm gonna drag it in And of course, it will vary the time it takes depending on how large the site is and also your internet speed.
so we have the archive and also the installer file. I will go to the site and add it to and then forward slash installer dot php and here we have then the setup for the site. We need to click I read and accept all terms. Next and then um, this will then unpack zip file into the standard WordPress site. And it can take uh, a little while before it's finished. We're now at step two of four, where I need to in then install the database. So to do that, one method is to click cPanel here, and then just log into the cPanel at your host, put in the username and password, and just log in. I need to create the database. So I'm going to go to MySQL databases, create a new database, and I need to create a new user, and then a password. Create user. I now have user right here. I need to add a user to the database. I click add. Click all privileges. Make changes. Go back. And I have then included the user to the database. Going back to the bucketer back into basic and then we had a database name so I'll just copy it and then the password because I wrote the password in another in a text file and then click test database it's fine and then next uh, yes, localhost, if this, it might cause a problem, then uh, check for their server or your host if you need to change the server to another name than localhost. So we're almost done now. Click options and here you can actually create a new username and a password. So this will be a new account. If you are for instance, forgotten or need the new uh, admin account, you can just create it right here. And then next. Site login. So what I do is then remove the installation files. And if I want to later on, I can also do a review of duplicator at wordpress.org. So we're going to remove the installation files. These are now removed. I'm going to check the site. And it looks like it is working nicely. So, so this is how you create a backup with duplicator and move it to another host to where you want then the website.